to understand the mechanism of the water use we have to remember the water cycle water cycle is nothing but the inflow and the outflow of water is must to have water there water once gets out and if it does not get any inflow back then it does not have any impact on it like water is not a non renewable energy it has to be stored it has to get from the other form for us as we remember the water cycle water gets evaporated because of sun then moves into the clouds then forms into the cooling then from cloud it reaches back again to the land to the normal levels this is a water cycle it should be there inflow and outflow should be there and it is a continuous process if this continuous process does not happen it leads to the disaster of the water levels now let us see what is a inflow here inflow of any water content feels that precipitation precipitation may be rain fall hag dew snow anything which the water gets evaporated up and moves up then it forms into the clouds then it starts into the surface by form of a rain or it reaches the ground and then it reaches to the underground flow if these three are occurring then it is called inflow if these three are in a continuous process only we get the water level in the underground level on the surface and in the atmosphere you have the water vapor presence which is nothing but the water presence coming to the outflow outflow again has two parts evaporation and transpiration when the evaporation and transpiration together are happening it is called evotranspiration how does this happen evotranspiration happens like evaporation from the lakes rivers and seas happens directly and when the transportation process is going on like when water is being transported in the form of rivers moving from one place to another place it gets diverted and the fertility of the water gets the quantity of water gets lessed up and then moves on to the other places because of that the water content also reaching to the levels also gets down so this is called evapor transportation like evaporation and transportation the other major issue which has to be addressed is the surface flow plus ground water what is the surface flow when the water which is flowing on the land level is called surface flow when the water is flowing on the land level like in the villages and all these places when it is flowing it appears like a streams or small small rivers when it is accompanied by a rain the flow becomes like a big river or it appears like a lake but after some days it disappears the surface flow is getting disappeared it is getting diverted the people will draw water from the lakes and rivers also in the villages which is a common scene because of that water gets dried up but when it comes to the ground waters sometimes when the surface flow is moving on the water will gets penetrates into the ground and gets into the settled into the interior places and it turns as a ground water levels the ground water level increases when the surface water is high or the rivers are flowing through it or when we have heavy rains but when the surface flow only is not provided sufficiently automatically the underground it does not get penetrated into the underground levels then automatically it leads to the less ground level of water water how are we using the water in our day to day life as we all know water is used at various levels like in agriculture for everything we need in agriculture water for threshing sowing and everything we need to cultivate the water supply for the fields then only we get the output of the agriculture here we are using the agriculture in a productive way because we are using the water for agriculture in a productive way that leads to the fertility of the land which leads to fertility of the crop where we get a good output which is required for all of us when it comes excessive use of water for agriculture or not supplied for sufficient amount of water like we supply water in open tub and we leave it for openly for some time and later we leave it for cutting of the connection of the water supply then it leads to the supply of the fields as per our knowledge but it is better to use the drip irrigations or the other sources where the water does not get wasted at all then a drip drip leads to the drop of the water leading to the particular plant or a crop then it provides sufficiently for us this is one of the best alternative how to use the water safely and at the very less amount of the convenience then domestic purpose we need from day morning morning as soon as we get up onwards till we sleep we need water for various activities the major activities for our physical needs then for the washing of the clothes and all these things domestically we need for cleaning of the houses and everything we need the supply of the water this we are using in our day to day life the domestic purposes then if we have animals in the villages those who wash their animals those who think for the animals to be bathed and all these things for that purpose also we are using the water that also is most required for us because animals also are part and parcel of our day to day life coming to the most important one is the industrial use of the water the water is used in industries for larger purposes like for washing of the chemicals for using of the machinery for using of the iron ore for everything for heating cooling and everything we need the water supply and all when the water supply is required for them they get some chemicals mix it to that water when it is washed off and taken off and sometimes they add the same water released into the lakes or the rivers after some years of detailed study we came to the conclusion that the water which is having more amount of carbon should not be mixed with the waters which are in the rivers or in the seas 
why it should not be mixed because if it is mixed it is going to affect the health of all the other people those who are staying in that particular region when it is in the village region when they are going to mix that one the all the village people may get the health issues this is a major thing we have to remember that the industrial use should be remembered when they are adding or releasing the wastes that should not be added into the common place where all the other people are going to access it or like when small children get they may get the other health issues or the animals may die or fishes may die which may cause environmental imbalance for us so the water use is done at various levels and we are exploiting the water continuously at various levels when we dig a bore well we are digging it to the deeper extent till where we can get it the aquifer deeper to that to the maximum benefits from it this can be done only when the extreme drought conditions and that also will be replenished when the extreme heavy rains or good year comes for us so that the underground water levels will be raised up but we are using this in the normal condition and we are not having any control on the bore wells like how much to be squeezed or how much to be used from the bore wells we have common phenomena like day to day needs should be sufficient from the bore wells we are using it we are owning it the government does not have any authority to control it this all should be addressed and used properly then only water can be saved for us